Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Dr. Dean Finucane. As of 7.23 this morning, we successfully separated Mr. Griff Rees from himself. Well, I'm here to talk through the procedure we performed on patient Rees. As requested by the Mr. Rees management team and due to obvious patient-doctor confidentiality requirements, I will not be taking any questions as to the patient's reasons behind this operation or his future intentions as a result of this procedure. Any technical questions will be answered later today after I've outlined the background and specifics of the procedure. The first step was deciding whether separation was in fact an option. Our surgical team employed a comprehensive range of what I might call cutting edge tests such as ultrasound, MRI and 3D graphics to assess the following points. The precise whereabouts and extent of the separation would both sides of the patient be equally robust. What quality of life is likely for one or both sides after surgery? Put simply, our major area of concern was that the patient would have insufficient uh, internal organs to support both sides after separation. And the outcome of the operation would be doubtful for one half of the body. Fortunately, Mr. Reese's organs were of above standard quality, actually 5.9 on the Auburn scale. This led our team to conclude that they were entirely suitable and indeed insufficient abundance. The procedure was initiated at 5.40 p.m. last evening and completed a short time ago at 7.23 a.m. to be precise. Today, April 1st, marks a significant milestone in medical history, on par, I believe, with Dr. Christian Barnard's first human heart transplant in the Grutashur Hospital in Cape Town in December 1967. Putting it simply, the procedure was as follows. The first step is ligating the supplying arteries and veins to prevent hemorrhage. The muscles were, are then transected and finally the bone is sawn through with a specially designed oscillating saw. Skin and muscle flaps are then transposed over the evenly cut body segments. We use a sophisticated central separating laser system to sear the muscles and organs to avoid internal leaking, seeping and to rule out any subsequent involuntary twitching. Understandably, the obvious duality issues Mr. Rees will face are immense and will need to be monitored and worked out with various high-level counselling sessions for both separated sides, both physical and mental. He will also be given a strict physiotherapy and fitness regime to overcome the physical trauma of living as a mono-framed uniped. I have every confidence that Mr. Rees will have a normal life expectancy and will be in a position to resume his career, albeit perhaps in a somewhat more restricted way than in the past. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.